Good morning and welcome to The Last Question. I'm your host, Don Allen. And today I'm joined by a couple of co-hosts from another program that we're all gonna be on. So you'll get a lot of us, you might get tired of it. But um, from Chicago, Illinois, to my left or your right, depending on how you're looking, is Mr. Gregory Sane. Mr. Sane, good morning, how are you? Good morning, good morning. And it is an honor, man, on this beautiful Monday morning to be with you brothers that care and uh, are willing to give back. So I am honored, blessed by the best to be on here live in color with some good brothers. All right, thank you, sir. And Welcome from the other side, of the, from the other side of the river, uh, Black Wine Foundation uh, CEO, uh, all around great business man and friend, Mr. James Holmes Jr. Hey, James, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, brother esteemed Don Allen. Uh, it's always a pleasure. This is a nice way to wake up and get going. And it's uh, absolutely an honor to be on the same stage with the great Gregory Sang. So uh, we're going to chop it up. We're going to have a good time breaking it down, spitting the truth. Yeah. And I would like to start out. I have this, uh, this one minute uh, Martin Luther King, I have a dream from 1963, and I would just like us to uh, to marinate on that for one minute and one second. Here we go. I have a dream that one day on the green hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream. One day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream. My four little children one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. That was Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream from 1963. I'm going to turn that off now so it doesn't keep going. But, you know, there were some interesting things that uh, have come up over 2020 and 2021, especially with the pandemic and the effect that it has on or does have on Black America, some of the disparities that uh, have happened for generations are coming out uh, six to tenfold. And we're looking at this and we're wondering like, how does this happen? How do we remain in the same track for so many years? You know, did we not take advantage of the writings of uh, James Baldwin, Langston Hughes? Did we not listen to Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Huey Newton? You know, did we not pay them any attention? Because in reality, if we look at the situation, and it's a complex situation, uh, James Baldwin said the, uh, the subduer and the subduers, subduees do not speak the same language. And uh, that's like, I think that's where we're at still. So with that said, you know, I wrote some questions here that I, I want to go with and you guys can take it any way you want or anywhere you want, I should say. But I, I talked about when Black America lost Martin Luther King and others, did we lose our, our motivation for action? And I'd like you guys to chime in, you know, and just 
whatever head space. Go ahead. If, if I would uh, interject just briefly here, uh, brothers, um, a, a quote from King was, um, the contemporary tendency in our society is to base our distribution of scarcity, which has vanished, and to compress our abundance into the overfed mouths of the upper classes until they gag. If democracy is to have the breadth of meaning, it is necessary to adjust this inequity. It is not only moral, but it's also intelligent. We are wasting and degrading human life by clinging to archaic thinking that has not changed. That has not changed. Mm. That's deep. That's deep. And if I might quote one, <clears throat> the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in the moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at the times of challenge and controversy. Dr. King dream became a nightmare and when yes. he spoke in 1963 versus when he spoke uh in 1967 so when he spoke in 1963 i think at the lincoln memorial and when he came and and addressed the southern leader uh, uh, uh um, what did they call him the southern leader uh uh council that group, SELC, SELC, Southern he, Christian Leadership Council, Southern Christian Leadership Council. And when he spoke there, bro, it was a whole different tone. Dr. King uh, became a threat to America. And when Dr. King spoke in 1967, you heard a woke Dr. King, not a dreamer yes. Dr. King. Dr. King evolved. said, Dr. King said out of his mouth that he feels as though he was integrating our people into a burning building. Boom. And, and, and so when you look at the current conditions right now, and you look at those who say, I was a Dr. King disciple, I was part of the civil rights movement etc you did not have the backbone of that man because he put his life on the line bro so when you hear that mountaintop speech and when you hear a man saying that he don't want you to say certain things at his funeral he just wants you to say what that he loved the people and he was a drum major for justice for justice and so we have to go back Look at Dr. King, look at today, and what do you think Dr. King would be saying? We still talking about equity. We still talking about race. We still talking about all of the inequalities in America. Why haven't those items been delivered? Who's holding them up? Is it the Senate? Is it the, is it the Congress? Is it the President? Damn it, is it us? Or yeah. are we waiting on a mystery God to deliver us out of what we should be doing for ourselves. I submit to every one of you all that's listening and thank you for tuning in. I'm so happy to be on this platform with my brother, brother Don Allen, who is a scholar, who is a multi-talented brother, him and brother James Holmes, Black Lions. I'm just telling you, these are not lightweight brothers. They don't just wake up in the morning without nothing to do. They're doing it because they have been commissioned by God to bring you information, to bring you education and inspiration that will, in fact, create a movement, not just a march, but a movement, not just a moment, but a movement, man. We got to see some progress. And i say this, and then I'll let you all, because I know <laughs> there's people writing already comments and et cetera, and I think we should respond to them. But man, when you look at the unemployment, when you, you know, when Dr. King spoke about the wars, the unjust wars, that's when the government, that's when, I mean, you think about, you got a building named after J. Edgar Hoover. That, 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 this man, J. Edgar Hoover, wicked man, mm. 
wicked men it, that was it, listening it, it, in it, it, on Dr. King's private conversations. A man a, without a threat. And you, you, I mean, how in the hell can you see a man like beautiful man, beautiful soul? I mean, if he wasn't from God, then ain't nobody from God. Yes. But look at us now. We are punked out. We fray. We afraid. Oh, I'm going to lose my job. Or they're going to take away my title. You're going to die any damn way. So why <laughs> die a coward? A coward <laughs> dies a damn thousand lives. Stand up, man. Talk, 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 brother. Say, I'll tell you what. You know what? There's a whole lot of layers to that onion there, brother. Say, uh, mm -hmm. let me add this first of all. Um, Dr. King evolved, all right? Dr. King is acknowledged by friends and foes alike as a genius. He started college when he was 15, okay? I don't know if a lot of people remember that. Very, 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 very bright man, but right. still a man, okay? And he evolved over time and his thinking got deeper and more woke over time, like you said, brother uh, Greg. Now, um, to quote from uh, Dr. Claude Anderson, um, author of Powernomics, he said, I love Dr. King, I love him. He says, but the time spent integrating lunch counters and things like that were not that productive. He says, when Dr. King became more woke and he started talking about things like boycotting some of these major companies. As a matter of fact, on that speech, I've been to the mountaintop. He talked about uh, boycotting Coca-Cola, Wonder Bread, Seal Test Milk. And, mm. and then, then I got the quote right in front of me. And this is the quote. But not only that, we've got to strengthen black institutions. He says, I call upon you. Listen now to take your money out of the banks downtown and deposit your money in Tri-State Bank. We hmm. want a bank in. Whoa! Yeah. And then he was assassinated, okay? So as long as you're talking about integrating lunch counters and buses and things like that, they're, they're tolerant. When you start talking about That's affecting right. the money, things happen. J. Edgar Hoover, a uh, evil man, right? And even now, the FBI and their legacy is corrupt. It's corrupt. Any way you look at it, it's corrupt. It's so corrupt, they don't even, they don't, they're shooting their own foot off right now, but we'll get to that later. We'll get to all of that later. Uh, spent all uh, so much of his time targeting the black leaders, leaders, Evers, uh, King, Malcolm, and I mean, they'd start, and, and what they do is they'd layer it. They'd yes. start with little dirty yes. tricks. Yes. Then they'd move up from that, and, and then they'd, they'd send the threats to their life and all that just to see how courageous right. you are, That's right. if you're going to back off or not. And think about this also. King did not have to do what he did. King lived, a, King was born into a fairly privileged situation for a black man. <coughs> Father was a pastor. Grandfather was a pastor, all had college degrees from Morehouse University. Uh, he didn't have to do what he did. He knew that when he took hold of that mantle, that, like Brother Sane said, he was going to have to be courageous. And let's, let's, let's be real. And then he talks about the courage. And every day, all the bougie brothers, they get to make a decision. I'm not judging. I let Brother Sane do that. But they get to make decisions every day. <laughs> Am I going to stay on the corporate plantation and keep my mouth closed? Or am I going to speak out and seek the truth? I love what you just said, though, Jay. I, I love it because at the end of the day, when you say he had a life that he didn't have to get involved, Brother Don have a life. And what he's doing as a successful educator, and you a businessman, me, an administrator, et cetera, we don't have to. We can still be in our beds, sleep, dreaming. Can I say that again? We can yeah. still be in our beds, Man. sleep, dreaming, but we yeah. decide uh, to come on and not worry 
about the critics, not worry about the controversies. Because when I speak, it's very clear to people that I don't speak out of hate. I speak out of pain. I speak out of uh, frustration. I speak out of love, even though you might not feel that, you know, like granny when they was whooping us. And they say, I love you too, when they were spanking us. So oftentimes when people hear us speak the truth, it's not always readily, you know, accepted or, you know, because it's, it's uncomfortable. But if we do not put a dent in our progress, then all we doing is just blowing smoke. You dig? So I feel like um, we must set the record straight. You know, Dr. King said, get the language straight. Get the language straight. And that's our responsibility, man. We cannot just allow mainstream uh, 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 America and et cetera. They give us what they want. So they created the narrative for Dr. King and they just play over and over and over to the degree where they don't even call him the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. They don't even know his name. They call him MLK. It's MLK. And we so stupid, we start saying the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Like the KKK. They, you know, who are these people? I'm, I don't celebrate Christmas to the degree like most people, but they didn't took Christ out of Christmas. Yeah. So it's yeah. Xmas. You got to think about the motives behind these folks. They not just being fancy and shorten the words and shorten your name just to do it. They trying to erase that history. And you're, you're absolutely, absolutely right. They're trying to erase that history from the beginning. I mean, it, I mean, okay, these pictures of Jesus. That that's so insulting. <laughs> if you study this at all, Jesus was not white with blue eyes, okay? He's not, not, he wasn't. If you have any measure of intellect to you whatsoever, all right? So basically throughout time, that's what they've been doing, taking eraser, going out, uh, erasing history. And when that wasn't good enough, they write their own. Christopher Columbus discovers America. Oh yeah, all right? lies, and so lies, and more that, lies. You know, something that Farrakhan says, is he's like, what they're doing is what they've been doing for 400 years. Why do we expect them to change now? Okay, we talked about all the devious things done to our leaders and what, what, what in the end, when they didn't work, what did they do? They assassinated every single one of them. And I think Brother Shane and, and uh, Brother Don, that's one of the reasons why you have uh, a lot of people reluctant to, to come to the forefront today is because they know if you're in the forefront, you're in the, you're, you you got that little red laser pointed at you. Yeah, they and ostracize you, Jay. They ostracize you. They yeah. ostracize you. Yeah. They murder you. They uh, marginalize you when you speak the truth. And I say this to white folks that's listening. I got white friends and we don't say it like the White people say, I got a black friend. No, I am very cordial. I am very yes. sincere and I am very positive of white people, period. I don't care if you psychedelic, but damn it, I am not going to compromise the truth. And if you uncomfortable, that's your business. But honestly, every white person that listens to the truth and accept it, this is how you get free. You are you enslaved by your own lies. You enslaved by your own false control. That's why you have to play this white privilege, white supremacy role. You know damn well that black people are the original people of the planet. And it's a fact, we are the dominant. But that doesn't mean we better than you. That doesn't they, mean that we should that. hurt you. That doesn't you know mean what? that we should be discriminated against you. It simply means that. that we are your fathers without us. And there's no other people that can exist, but because Bill Gates owned now all of the farmland and Bill Gates owned this and you got a little white guy owning Facebook and you got a white boy that own Amazon and you got white people on all the damn airlines. You got white people that own Wells Fargo and Chase Bank and you got white people that own America. 
Listen to this. And you look at us in a very substandard way because you based everything off of economics, not morality, not spirituality. And that's why the damn country falling right now because of that mentality. Boom. You cannot take two white people genetically and mate them and make a black baby. It is genetically, scientifically impossible. You can take two black oh, people yes. and mate them and genetically and make a white baby. It's called an albino. Do yeah. your research. Do your research. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sitting here and I wanted to listen to both of y'all and just be clear and and let it flow. But here's my concern about this blackness piece. I don't want to be doing this. I don't mm. think that we should be sitting here today talking about, let me make my point, talking about dead black leaders, the civil rights movement, and how for 60 years we've been virtually static and the evolution of Jim, it went from Jim Crow and in 2021, he, he's James Crow, okay? <laughs> and it is fully engorged in all of our institutions, our industries, um, black people in the United States, or let's just do Minnesota since we're broadcasting live out of Minnesota. If you look at the historic context of what's called our plight, see, you get from the left and from the right kind of the same thing. Well, why are you guys complaining? Why are you guys, you know, still talking about that? You know, and you call me a racist and you might be talking about white people. That's not what we're doing. We're very concerned because I know us, us three right here, we get up in the morning and scratch our heads and go like, well, damn, we've been wearing a mask before the mask mandate came out. <laughs> and now we got to wear a mask on top of a mask just to make you feel comfortable with who we are in, in this world and not your historical assumptions about who we should be. So when we run into that, no one white person can understand the stigma and the trauma it creates. And we're not victims at all, in the least. We're not victims. But the thing is, why do we keep asking for what's ours? That's okay? right. Why are their kids and families, black kids, Hispanic, Native American, et cetera, homeless in Minnesota? Why, when I drive down the street, you know, I put a question up there. I'll get to it, get back to it. You know, I go to between Minneapolis and St. Paul quite a bit, more St. Paul, because that's where I live. And I see these guys out every day replacing light poles, electrical lines, repairing the streets, digging holes in, in yards, all city stuff, right? And I'm counting. I'm looking for that Hispanic Latino. I'm looking for that black man on the crew. I'm looking for that Asian man on the crew. I'm looking for that diversity that people talk about, which is not really diversity. It's really opportunity. Right. And I don't see any of these people doing that. So why for 60 years are we here? Which is question number two, meaning we've been generationally riding in the same spaces for every year for the last six years. Again, to my earlier quote or earlier statement, I'd rather be here talking about businesses, innovations from black communities, uh, educations. I want to celebrate some black kids getting their PhDs and then masters and graduating from, that's what I'd rather talk about. That's right. But like you said earlier, Mr. Sane, we have been trained, tricked, bamboozled, and, and kicked to the curb psychologically. And when you try to tell someone this, oh, you're toxic. Hmm. We don't want to hear that. You know, we all got bougie black friends, okay? <laughs> and if you talk about stuff in the community, they'll be like, oh, Don, that's cool. I want to talk about the kicker I'm going to have. These are black people. <laughs> they don't want to talk about this. This is not on their radar, but yet they function in the middle class very eloquently. 
but that might not be their call. So, I mean, why are we here? Why are we still here? Why are we still talking about this shit? Excuse my French. This is a family show. Why? Why? Help me out, bro. Help me out. Well, you know what? Here's another quote. It just connects with everything you said. If the soul is left in darkness, sins will be committed. The guilty one is not he who commits the sin, but he who causes the darkness. The policy makers of the white society has caused the darkness. They created discrimination. They created slums. They perpetuated unemployment, ignorance, and poverty. It is, it is mm. uh, inconsistable and deplorable that Negroes, or you could say black, but it is in America's best interest to deal with the crime. And then Dr. King mentioned that it's the silence. It's the silence when you don't say anything. Why are we here? You right. On last, this past Saturday, I was doing a thing on mentoring. You right, Don. We want to be focused on all of the other things. But when you look out your car and you sensitive to the same thing I am, you just <laughs> left a job and you got a job and you look and you say, damn, on that construction site, not one black person. And you're doing it in a black community. That's just totally crazy. But then you have to look at us and you have to say, why do we allow that to continue to go on in 2021? You're right, Don. Why are we here? And is this going to be something that we have to continue? Is that our place? That's right, Don. Is that <laughs> our place in the world? Was we born to do this? And I'll say this about some of the black folks, the bourgeoisie, and then I, James, I know you want to kick in here. Many of them have lost their identity. What profit a man to gain the whole world and lose their soul? So you can make all the money in the world. But when you lose your identity and when you just try to go along to get along and to fit in, unfortunately, you have lost your identity. And you, I feel sorry for you because you want to be accepted by being phony. Well, that's, that's, that's deep, Brother Greg. Uh, something that uh, Malcolm X said, it says, you can have a tree that produces the same or similar fruit. But if some pieces of that fruit fall from the tree with high impact, and get bruised badly and continue to roll away from the tree and to continue to get bruised, at some point, they're not even recognizable as being from that tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that has not changed at all. That has not changed at all. And um, the lion has no incentive to tell the gazelle or the zebra how to escape. That is never going to change. That is never going to change. Um, the painful experience of freedom is never, ever voluntarily given to the press. That's, That's right. something else Dr. King said. Never. And I'll, I'll tell you something else, is that um, this is something we don't really hear. I felt it when I was a kid, and, I, and I, I bet you guys did too. Our parents actually, it was it was inclusive of us as kids. We we our parents knew, made sure we knew what was going on as far as the movement and things like that, um, and, and what we stood for, and what we were seeking. Um, there was actually what was called children's market. I don't know if you guys knew that there was a children's. That's right. In the early 60s, where there was over a thousand children that day that skipped school and actually marched. Today, we wouldn't even, we think that that was like just was crazy, all right? But what happens is through the generations, you get disconnected, and you know what? 
You got to learn, relearn, learn, relearn. And they don't know their history. So no, many no. of us don't know our history. And it's really just a double whammy because the layers and layers and layers and layers of institutionalized racism that hasn't changed at all for the same I don't know that it will change at all because it's set up that way from the very beginning. The very beginning, America is, listen to me here, America is the most hypocritical nation in the world. I mean, you'll have other countries that do oppressive things, but they don't hide behind freedom and liberty for all, that all men are created equal. Come on, all men created equal. And you got in that same constitution that blacks are three fifths human. Okay, so America hasn't really changed. America's always been. Why too, is this still there? But let me ask you, been, why is it still there? Because that's how they still feel. And you know why? Because we will not use our intelligence, our God gifted abilities. We've been damaged because Don said it on one of the other shows. I mean, you would think when you think about the, the progress that we've made and yet how far we still need to go. But then when you look at that, just what you just said, James, it's, it's scary that we still talking about this. And it, so it's, it's evidence that there's been some damage, but I'm Moses and all of the Moses is a Dr. King, let my people go. Our people don't want to go. Our people are very comfortable <laughs> just having a good job and going home. Also, Moses wasn't said. assassinated either. R right. So right. That, that's a part right. of it too. You get the leaders and you pick them off. That's just a message to everybody else. Right, right. And then as Don, Don, what was your other question, Don? Because I think that one fits in to a deeper part of this discussion. What was the other one, Don? Okay, it was what happened to the dream? That was one question, but before we go into it that. It became a nightmare. Yeah, 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 you asked that right from the get go. <laughs> Let me let me let me explain. And you the know mindset. you gotta be sleep to dream. That's the yeah. deeper part. Yeah. Let me, let me just tell you about uh both of you guys were talking about this, but and I just want to focus in for a couple minutes on our young people, our young black boys more specifically. So you know it snowed in Minnesota a few days back. Mm -hmm. And I had the opportunity to uh work with this gentleman who get some you know, young brothers, 14, 15, 16, and they shovel, they use snow blowers and shovels and they clear, they clear people's walks off. That's what they do, you know? And uh, he pays them pretty good. But it's really funny, a couple guys came, they're about, one's 14, one's 15, and they both had Jordans on. And I said, here, who goes the shovel? Here goes the shovel. And they go, what am I supposed to do? I said, well, you shovel the walk, the sidewalk. You take all the snow off the concrete and toss it over there in the pile. Oh, man, I can't do that, man. I got my I got my kicks on. I'm dripping. Wow. And I'm like, what did you say? And it was really strange because it took 45 minutes. And I think I'm a pretty fast talker. It took me 45 minutes to convince this kid how important this particular life skill was for a teenage kid who didn't have a job in the community. And when it snowed, you could shovel snow. When the grass is too long, you can cut people's grass, you can rake leaves. That skill set is not even embedded in them, like it was in us when we were kids. You know? And well, so. You know what? And what you just said right there is interesting because when you think about when we were growing up, and what we valued versus what they valued. So this world has become so materialistic and it's driven by that. So, and it was very clever. You got to give these people credit. They have absolutely um, really um, did some damage to the degree where our children, if they don't have on those shoes or a certain type of little shirt of saying they feel like they've been deprived and yeah. we 
we we had fun just doing Mr. So and So Yard and getting a couple of dollars, and and we didn't have to worry about that. But television, the marketing people, they make it a big deal to keep us lost. Look, I'm gonna say this, and we got to do a show on this because when we, we I really wanna to stay mm -hmm. focused on Dr. King, but I have to say this when it comes to those gym shoes and the images that we our children are looking at and portraying. Uh, it's really damaging, man. It's damaging. So when you think about Dr. King, many of our babies, they don't even know the history of Dr. King. You know that book by Chancellor Williams, The Destruction of Black Just Civilization? At, right in the beginning of the book, it said, what happened to the people of old? And they said, the people of old? The man asked, he said, uh, they died. He said, why? He said, because they forgot their history. And see, history best uh, rewards your research. You got to know who you are. And then our babies today, they don't know much about Dr. King or Brother Malcolm or the Honorable Elijah Muhammad or Marcus Garvey. And one of the biggest crimes that we have allowed mainstream America to do is pick out who our leaders are, first of all, or who voices, what voices. We all are leaders. Leadership comes from within. But the minute they feel threatened by a certain voice, they call them anti-Semitic. They call them racist. So yes. anytime, you know, if Don, Don blows up, James blows up, Gregory blows up, and we on that platform and we say some things that's truthful, then Netflix gonna take it off. Or so and so, our children—they they barely know a little bit about uh, Malcolm X. They barely, and I, I'm thankful to Alex Haley and the movie Spike did, and others now documentaries. But at the end of the day, man, they erase our history. Our babies don't know nothing about Nat Turner. They know nothing about Denmark Vesey. They know nothing at all. They know a little bit about Harriet Tubman, and when you saw that picture or that movie with Harriet Tubman, uh, they always like Mississippi burning. Every movie, they 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 water it down so that, you know, it won't be no real reaction from it. So all of a sudden, you know, they're gonna show some other scenes. I'm telling you, they so trick, they they tricks. I mean, I mean, they really musicians when it come to controlling our mindset. Cause look, after we have a good sermon at church, I mean, people be crying, hands up in the air, and they, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All of that. Thank you, Muhammad, et cetera. Soon as the church is over with, they go right back to the community and all of that leaves. You know why? Because we have become emotionally imbalanced. Speak, brother. Speak, speak, speak. speak, speak. They're, they're, what, they're, what they are, they're, they're maestros and they're maestro chess players. Um, a lot of people not going to want to hear this. A lot of black people not going to want to hear this. But oftentimes, as a race, we are two steps behind because so much that's being done is pre-planned. So much of it, and we've been playing checkers, and they've been playing chess. Brother Greg, getting back to the Jordans, the issue there is that uh, you have producers and you have consumers, okay? We have been conditioned as a people to be consumers. So when you see those little black boys and what they want are those Jordans, you really cannot fault them because their young undeveloped minds are no match for the pre-planned consumerism, targeting them specifically, the poorest of the poor to pay the most for something as insignificant of the brand on your shoes or your clothes or whatever it is that you wear. Uh, Jewish kids do not teach their children that. They teach them to take that money and save that money. As a matter of fact, there's nothing stopping us from doing it. I got my first, my first grandson is, is going to be born in March. The day he gets here, he will have an UGMA account. 
set up. Mm -hmm. So um, in, in that account, he'll, it, we'll, we will save it for 18 years. And at 18, he'll have control of that. And he'll be able to make his decisions. And he'll mm -hmm. be able to, to understand that you're either going to be the producer or the consumer. Which one are you going to choose? Images. Images. Well, images let me ask you this, powerful. Jay. Let me ask you this before I get this point. You and Don. So mm -hmm. when you think about Dr. King with what you just said and what we've been saying, the integration, the whole push for integration, did that hurt us? And, and because we talking about, so, so, so when you give this context, because the integration part, but, uh, the integration, I don't know why you making me go there. Yeah, because yeah. the integration really. part, but now dig this, because they made Dr. King an integrationist, right? And he, he felt like the way we were going to be, uh, make progress, they made it a, come off that way, is that we needed to integrate with white people, right? Now dig this, because we're talking about the, the material stuff, the young people stuff, and when you look at um, our condition, America, especially here in Chicago, uh, we are segregated for the most part, right? So when you think about how we integrated our skills, talents, have they taken advantage of that? Because every time I see a documentary about all of these great uh, actors or great, really more so musicians and et cetera, they died broke with all of the talent that they had. Somebody owned their catalog, somebody owned the rights to their song, and they not black folks. That's a fact. So, so we we integrated, or or are we are we just playing games with that? Because I can tell you, there's some areas in. In Illinois right now, you tell me the ones in Minnesota that you can't find a black person hardly in Barrington, Illinois, here, a rich <laughs> suburb, and you can barely find a black person. But yet, everybody want to say, oh, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, and we won, and we going to have the inauguration, and we stop lying. Mm -hmm. America is really? still two different societies. And yeah. don't tell me to wait. And don't give me no speech. Don't give me just put Barack Obama in there. No, I would cuss you out. I would cuss you out because the condition of black people has gotten worse. Yeah, it hasn't improved at all. But oh, oh, oh. oh, go ahead, Don. No, I, I just said, and he's absolutely right. It, it hasn't improved. And I, I just want to let folks know we're not complaining whining or anything but we're trying to have this conversation and ask these questions to figure out how we are not in this same space next january middle of january absolutely you know um, how are we not let's not be in this same space tomorrow because you know? because don i say this and i say it again they the people they want you to listen to. So you're gonna get entertained by a bunch of folks. You know, we're gonna we're gonna laugh in the morning. They're gonna give us comedians on the radio in the morning. I ain't mad at the brothers because they become millionaires, but they have us laughing while it's a serious moment. So they not gonna they not gonna play the honorable Elijah Muhammad who that promoted and had a do for self program. You're not gonna hear about that. You're not gonna hear about Marcus Garvey. It ain't a child. Have they? Have, do we ever talk about the Honorable Marcus Garvey? No. They no. give us Dr. King after you kill a man, and you still have not tried to make the dream real. You haven't helped whatsoever. You give us some crumbs, and then we supposed to be happy about the crumb. I say this, and I say it loud and clear: Black people have to do for self. I'm sorry if you don't do for self, you're going to always look for others to do for you. And that's why it's so easy for an Arab to come from overseas and open up a nasty store in our community. Man, that ain't progress to open up a nasty gas station in yeah. our community. That ain't Asians, I mean, Asians yeah. don't even speak to us. And I, some of them do in the community, but they do your nails. 
Some of them that do your nails, they don't live in the community that they do on the nails. They get the money and they leave right out. See, but I mean, the wig shop, you go and you buy your weave, I ain't mad at you, but they go and they leave. All I'm saying is look at the damage. Look at the practices that we're doing. And Don, I got to go back to what you say. Damn, how do we fix this? How do we change this? Or next year, God willing, we here to see it, that will we be saying the same thing? They play the speeches every year, just like Kwanzaa. We do the seven seven days of Kwanzaa, <laughs> meal, purpose. Man, ain't a Negro buying nothing looking for a black place to go and do business. But we light the candles. We go through all the ceremonial stuff, and then we take our butt right back to sleep. You know what, Brother Greg? That is amazingly profound. And actually, just what you said drives my whole life, okay? I worked for the corporate plantation for years and years and years. I did not become free until a year and a half ago, okay? And once I became free a year and a half ago, I decided that there was never going to be an issue where somebody was going to look at me and go, all he does is just sit there and just complain about the system. No, brother, let me tell you what I'm doing personally, okay? Some of you may follow Black Lives, some of you may not, but uh, I got a master class, and literally, literally, what I do is I take these young people, this ain't no joke, I take them and I show them how to do for self. Teach. How to do for self. Teach. I took my Wall Street white education, got free from the shackles of corporate America. I'm on my own now. I can go out and I can speak the truth freely and I can take action freely. And so I'm the free. I'm free I am creating young men <laughs> that can be that, independent bro. and make their own decisions. <laughs> I love and it, Jay. That's, 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 that's exactly what we need more of exponentially. But let me back up for a minute. It's uh, 917. We'll be here till 930, of course, unless these gentlemen have something urgent. But uh, how do we... And I only ask questions that I can't answer. How do we perform or, or, or build the synergy that we need to to move forward? See, because to be honest with you, I mean, like you guys, I'm tired of having these conversations. We know the data. The data's out there. We know we know what's happening. When COVID nineteen came in, you know, besides being some of the poorest and in the widest gaps, we found out that COVID was killing more of us. Than anybody else. So any disparity we can latch on to, be it biological, economical, or physiological, we latch on to it right away. And it, necessarily, it doesn't necessarily take us a higher, any higher. So tomorrow, you know, tomorrow, what do we do? What pathway should we be on to put those building blocks in place? Because we can't, we can't ask people anymore. We can't ask because we've been asking for 60 Don, years. Don, I got to laugh when you said that I was thinking what James just said. And I'm like, well, when we get off the plantation, me and you, we can talk to James, the free man. Yeah. And find <laughs> <laughs> we 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 gotta wait till we leave the plantation to talk to the free man. The free man wakes up in the morning and does his own schedule. I'll say this: unity is more powerful than an atomic nuclear bomb. And we've been talking unity. We get together, our egos is way out of proportion. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, the self-hatred, bro, the envy, the jealousy etc i mean the damage is so deep but i think in small numbers wherever people um have partnerships that's how we get out of it i don't think we're going to collectively come together and decide to change the landscape of our community because they penetrated our minds and hearts and so so much so that we don't even know how to come together and work together so right now 
we have to do it if two of us, one of us, or three of us, five of us, or whatever, feel like we could go and work together without feeling like we can't trust each other. That's the only way we're getting out of this. We're not getting out of this any other way. So I, my recommendation is everyone that has a business idea and you know a, a proposal to do this, they have, the, they have to trust somebody to partner with someone. I don't think collectively we're going to leave the inauguration, you're going to see the AKA signs. And I love my sisters and the, all of them, they're going to be, you know, saluting uh, the sister Kamala. But I don't think uh, we are going to have to just look at the symbol, uh, keep looking at the symbol. We're going to look, we need substance. We don't, We. I'm tired of people just want to throw symbols in our face. Oh, it's the first this, then the first that, in the first this, in the first that. No. We have to partner with people who are serious. Take a man like uh, Master Class James Holmes, who are teaching principles, a uh, sound principle. Don, what you do, you you don't even talk about it. You know, I will. I mean, the amazing stuff you do. And 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 for me, I think some of the curriculums that Don has. Oh, is unbelievable! Off the chart man. In, in, unbelievable. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. But no, but no, we gotta have it. I, I understand, and I'm, I'm clear on that. It's just that, you know, I'm finding challenges that should not be there, and I'm not talking about. And there's system, system. Right. Like if I have, if we, if we could clone ourselves each ten times, in in ninety days, Minnesota Minnesota would be a different place. But we can't do that, so we got to work within the resources we have. But the rules, like our our people, should be a little bit more upset about the education that our kids are getting. They should have a little bit more. And I'm not blaming the parent thing. I don't do that because it's hard for both sides. We stupid, bro. Here in Chicago, in Illinois, right now, <laughs> educationally, they they. It's, it's, it's a mandate. It is, a, uh, what do you call it? It is by law that our babies have to learn and be taught. And I'm not going to get into this, but I'm, I'm going to tell you this. The LGBTQ, but, but black history is not the law. See, that's how stupid we are. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and, and those downstate, the legislators, you are absolutely totally uh i'm not gonna call you unchrist like but if you really cared about our people then you would make black history real true black history that we <coughs> teach make that a mandate and i said that going back to what you said don mm -hmm. all of this stuff is connected and yeah. we have to just see what part of it keeps us tied down to where we don't see freedom we can't see it man it's just like i it, it, it's frustrating bro to <coughs> me that after we get all of these scholars and all of this information books and etc we don't see and then you look up and you see uh mr gayston on the majority of the farmland greedy 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 demon and just to show you what is his motives I'm, can, can I can I interject on that? Yes, excuse me. Um, what is his motive? <laughs> the motive but you free, you can say that. Motive, yeah, yeah, the motive, can say that, <laughs> the motive is to dominate. Okay, that's the motive. It's never changed. The motive is to dominate. And Gates, his arena is finance and economics to dominate. Here's something else, a little meat for you guys. We all know that Bill Gates has billions of dollars, fiat money, fiat money, paper, United States money, fiat money, okay? Produced, printed, distributed at the Fed. It costs three cents per dollar bill that the Fed produces. Do you guys know that in the last 12 months, the United States has printed 23% in one year, 23% of all the fiat dollars out in the community. Gates might be a lot of things, but the one thing he is not is stupid. 
So what is he doing? He's coming out of some of that fiat money that's losing every year. OK, we, we don't have time to get into all of that. Inflation basically kills the fiat money's a bad investment. And what he's doing is he is cycling into things that are more sustainable. Land. Land. Geez, real estate. More of it. Land. But they don't make any more of it. Let me tell you what else Gates is doing that Land. you don't think about. OK, Gates is also going heavy on commodities, you know, like gold, silver. Things like that, okay? And as well as, here's your other little thing, black folks, open up your ears. He is moving silently into crypto, okay? I'm not going out there and saying, hey, all you guys go out there and buy a bunch of crypto. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that he is moving ahead, and the things that they do is, is for a reason. Now, the more and more of that land that he can keep, accumulate silently, the more control he has. I mean, look at all the freeways in the United States. There is no coincidence that every freeway in the United States built through every city went through a black neighborhood. Look it up. Yeah. Look oh, it up. Yeah. And, look and, it up. And, no and listen, since we're talking about Dr. King, Can every I just say time, something else, every time I'll, I'll, somebody wants to tell you how to find a strip club or where to find the, the liquor store, it's always on Martin Luther King Drive. That's Denver. a fact. That's a fact. That's Florida. a fact. Denver. Let me back up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> I want to highlight this. Deep. I want to highlight this tie. Let's take a little commercial break here. I like this tie deep. in honor of my fraternity brother, Alpha Phi Alpha, uh, the great Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. So I want to put that quick little plug in there for all the frat out there that supported him all this time. We've supported building this monument. Uh, making a day a holiday and so forth because he is still, still one of the greatest, if not the greatest American to live. But getting back to something else I want to say real quick, and then I'll, I'll relinquish four to you, Brother Greg, um, is that there is a book out right now by Brian Burrell. I encourage everyone who's listening out there to do it. The book, I don't know, it might cost 20 bucks, but it's 20 bucks well spent. The name of the book is called Brainwash by Brian I Burrell. Him. Brainwashed. I know and basically him. what Brian Burrell does is he eloquently uh, takes you through just all the different things that have 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 uh, affected us in our thinking, in our conditioning, and it, none of it was by accident. None of it was by accident. Um, and until we actually acknowledge that and recognize it, we can never do anything about it. We'll always be gazelles, okay? The lions will continue to haunt us until we can actually invest in our knowledge. Yes. I agree with you 100%. We have a lot of stuff. You know, this could easily be a regular uh, four-hour show on a, <laughs> on a mainstream radio station, and because there's a lot of stuff that we could need to talk about. Uh, there goes the book that uh, James Burrell. was talking That's about. That's right, Tom Burrell. We just put it up there. So if anyone's interested, you should go check it out. But uh, there's a lot of things going on. And one of the quotes from Mr. King that I'm going to read thusly, it's, the time is always right to do what is right. Meaning that King set out with a roadmap as other great black leaders and uh, civil rights activists and they put things in words, things that we would have to read that forces us to documents and texts. And I'm making a point here. Large majority of our kids can't read. And a large majority of our kids are not reading these texts, these roadmaps, these, these ways and experiences that they can avoid if they do the right thing. And so we have to figure out a way to make sure that we turn back to the 1960, 1970 ideology of reading is important, knowledge is important, to create those strong 12 to 16 year old black men that go into life, That's right. you know, on a mission because they're wide awake, you know, and have left the slave dust behind, which is an important piece. But with that said, we're coming up on 
929. And I would like to give James and Mr. Gregory Sane an opportunity for a closing statement here today on Martin Luther King Day 2021. I'll go after James. Um, I just want to say that uh, I have gratitude for you, our brother Don, for this forum. Um, you know, we don't expect something like this to ever go mainstream because we spit too much truth, but that's okay. We still have to speak it, okay? And the answer to the big problems that we have, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So we're starting, you know, where we are by, by spitting the truth. And you know what? It will filter its way out along with other things that, that all of us are doing. Don's working on great projects. Greg's always working on great projects. And I got real big things popping. Beautiful, beautiful. I would just say, Brother Don and Brother James, it's been an honor being on this show with you all. I look forward to the new show we have coming up. It's a big deal, the, uh, uh, Black Corners. But we got to stop singing, just singing. We shall overcome. I mean, they, they got the gatekeepers <laughs> right now. They probably in Washington, D.C. and some of the lazy senators and lazy congressmen and lazy uh, so-called civil rights leaders. Some of them are trifling and they just get up there knowing black people suffering and black people catching hell. And your butt got the damn audacity to keep singing. We shall overcome. No, you've been overcome. Yeah. You need to, uh, oh my goodness yeah. relinquish the damn chain <laughs> i said bro i <laughs> said on the mountain top that's wow, how okay. i feel take it or let it alone exactly well gentlemen i'd like to thank you for joining me for this hour um talking about reflecting about Martin Luther King and some very interesting dynamics in our community, which is the black community. And I hope that our viewers, that people that are watching on Twitter and YouTube, um, get some kind of understanding. And uh, in closing, I want to say we're not against anybody. You know, and one of the important things that Mr. King said was that we need to work together. And until we do that, we're going to remain here this time next year. Let's start tomorrow and try to be a little bit like Martin Luther King. Thank you.